Hi, hello my friends. This is Jody. In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys the art portfolio that got me into Rissy, Parson, Pratt, and UL. So I've been wanting to do this for the longest time because when I was applying, I was looking for every single piece of advice I can find on YouTube and almost everywhere. So I hope this video can help you guys out there. First thing first, I do want to clarify that I applied as an international transfer graphic design student and eventually I've decided to go to RISD just because... Huh. Okay, let's break down the overall structure. Number one, Common App. This is pretty straightforward. Create an account on Common App and start applying, filling the details as it says. And if the application fee presents a hardship to you or your family, RISC can actually waive it for you. So just go for it. And you never try, you never know, right? I spent about a year preparing for this. Some of the work were old and some of them were new. And I also went for a National Portfolio Day in New York. Essentially, that's when you see your competitors in real life. Oh my god. So the first piece of work. To give you a background story, so I remember the first year of me studying in Singapore. One day, there's this guy, this guy that I don't even know. He doesn't even know me. He just passed by at my class. He was just shouting into the classroom and saying like, go back to your country, go back to your country. I'm like... So that was my first encounter with racism. Still salty about it, but it's okay. I don't even remember how he looked like. Instead, use that creativity into your drawing, into your painting. So I created this painting to raise awareness um, of school bullying, not just focusing uh, on racism only. I wanted to focus on illustrating the power of words. They can be as detrimental as physical abuse on teenagers. So torn and frayed, as seen on the girl's skin, her face and her inner world being turned upside down. The monochromatic fist and scowl and wave are three different wood panels mounted on top of one another to create visual dimensions and depths. It was also like the first time I was experimenting with a different material, bringing wood, acrylic paint, watercolor, pen into one painting. So do have a strong story behind, but also play with different materials. You can even like, you know, put a piece of cloth on the painting, put a cage around your piece of canvas or you can even cut it, you know, or don't burn it, don't play with fire. <laughs> Moving on, crashing wave. This was an observational drawing that was painted while working on the previous artwork. I just wanted to study the motions and color of wave as I felt strongly about the process of studying the originality of a subject. And we have quick figure drawing because we all know the RISD values students with like a strong foundation at fine art. Even though I'm applying as a graphic design student, it is still very crucial to let them know that you have the skills and you have what it takes to be studying at RISD. Based on what I know, I feel like they really like using charcoal and try to have that as one of your piece in your portfolio. So that is another advice. Moving on, kitchen counter. The material I use is gouache and again, it was really fun and I think it's always important to include your own culture. Imagine your art portfolio like your name card. The school is yet to see your face and really understand your personality. That is why they can only tell through your art, through the way you use colors, materials, and the way you choose the subject matter. What kind of story goes behind every piece of artwork? You are not only showing them, oh, look how well I can draw. You are also telling them like, this is who I am, a human being full of emotion and story and a lot of thinking goes behind. That is really important. This is inspired by a trip that I took in Sichuan, China. That trip got me hooked with Tibetan culture and like I'm just so fascinated about the colors and the fabrics and just the accessories. Just everything about the Tibetan culture just fascinates me. So I really wanted to do this and show them I have the skill to create work digitally as well. 
Again, it's another digital drawing. The first one we have a portrait drawing. This is a landscape, right? Um, it's just a moment that I really love. I'm trying to tell the mission officer that I'm someone who can do fine art, observational drawing, figure drawing, um, work with different material, show a little bit of culture, and work with digital. So that is my strategy while I was applying. So I kind of wanted to see me as someone who can do A, B, C, D. But of course, with a concentration in graphic design, I have this interesting folding publication that I made a few years ago in school. There are like different ways of folding this publication and eventually fold it into a small book that you can put into your pocket. And when you need it, just open it up and it will expand into like a map. <laughs> The next one is a packaging design. The drawing was created back when I did not know how to use Procreate. So it was done in Photoshop and uh, it's still one of my favorite pieces till this day. The next one is type design. So the strategy like I shared with you, it's about showing like different skill set that you have but with a concentration about the major you're applying to. Typography is like God every day. And this one is more about experimenting. In my years of studying design, I often draw inspiration from like the architects. But to me, I just love architecture. And I, I think that the shapes and curves and, and how they use light and you know the sense of space that a building can bring gives me so much more inspiration. That is why I created this experimental typography series to pay tribute to five great architects of this century. Combining the names and the styles of these architects, the softwares that I use were Photoshop, Procreate, and Illustrator. Moving on. Yeah. I wanted to explore on the topic of post-humanism. In my comment app, I wrote about um, how this self-portrait series crushing the human connection and intimacy with the rise of technology. I have another kinetic typography animation. I feel like I do want to end this portfolio with something moving, you know, like motion and again tying back to the focus of typography and animation is also of course another important skill that we, we should have. And the second last piece uh, of work, it was a advertising campaign that I did. So personally, this project meant a lot to me. And I do want to show uh, the school that I have the skill set to crack a brief and to work with real clients and also like even have directing and filming skills. That is why I end this uh, last piece of my portfolio with a short film. And this short film has won like a couple of awards in Singapore. <laughs> Thank you.
this campaign it's called the most beautiful rhythm like what is the most beautiful rhythm it is simply the sound of healthy heartbeat so this campaign aims to direct young singaporean working adults to pay attention to their heart rhythm and take responsibility for their health i did think about whether to have it in my art portfolio um you know because having like a advertising campaign it's pretty rare for um risky portfolio or parson but i think that's just what makes me different I even bought a drone for this project just to film like the the scene. In your portfolio, we can talk about like climate change, gender issue, COVID, your culture. But the thing is, what makes you stand out? What makes you different from the student next to you who's also working on the issue of climate change? How creatively different you can be? That has to translate into your portfolio. That is why the arrangement of the portfolio and the layout of every piece of work really matters a lot so basically this is everything that goes into my portfolio and i hope you can see the overall structure and the overall thinking that i have while working on this last but not least letters of recommendations this is something that requires a little bit of interpersonal skills for me i have three uh, letters of recommendations two from my lecturers and one from the principal of my school one advice i can tell is to always um build a good relationship with them i didn't plan to apply to Racy since young or when i was eight it was more of a recent thing it was just a thought that i had in 2018 but i always have a good relationship with uh, my teachers so when i asked them to write a letter of recommendation it was almost natural to them for wanting to help me try to get someone who to write for you as professional as possible and if you are working get your employer to write a letter of recommendation for you and three of them gonna tell the mission officer like a different story about you one about your your design your art one about your school work how you study and how much of a leader you are in school and how how hard you work at the company and how much value you bring that kind of thing so try Try to have that different set of things going on and let me tell you if you do follow what i've told you in the art portfolio and letter of recommendation and of course essay would be a story that i will share another day but these two huge components will definitely help you a lot okay boy i've never thought that i would get into risky and I legit put so much so much effort not only in the way like i draw or pain stuff it's more about the overall strategy and i did this all by myself think this video has helped you please give me a like and comment down below on anything else you will want me to share 